Hey, what's up guys? It's Seth from Workbench, and this week we're gonna take a look at triggering animations with objects and other things. This week we're gonna take a look at creating a setup that will let us trigger animations with another object. The setup is simple, but you can scale it and make it pretty complex. Okay, we're gonna start out by taking a look at this example. I'm gonna hit play here so you can see what happens. So let me take you through this setup. So it's based off of cloner set in blend mode. And how I have this set up is I have a few objects in here. I have a torus and a sphere. And then as you can see, the, the torus gets larger and the sphere stays the same size. Then it gets a little larger. And then finally, the torus stays the same size, but we reduce the radius. And then I took all of those and stuffed them inside of a cloner. And if I turn off, let's see, if I turn off all these effectors, you can see what it's doing. See, it's just blending from one shape to the other. So then I created this plane effector. Inside this plane effector, the only thing I have turned on is modify clone. I have that at 100%. And then in fall off, I created a linear field, which I have a child of a sphere that I animated that's just animating down like this. Now you can see this is my linear field here, and it's a child of the sphere. So if I play that back, this is what it looks like. Now the second part of this is I added another plane effector with another linear field. I made that a child of the previous linear field. And that's a much smaller one. You can see as it goes by, it will push this object over to the left. Of course, I have to turn it on. So if I go into the effector here, I'll turn it on. So if I play that back, watch what happens. And then I added a couple delay effectors to smooth out the animation a little bit. So if we look here, this delay effector is set to even. And then this delay effector is also set to even. And I have them staggered one in between each plane effector. So if I play this back now, you can see it has a nice smooth movement to it. All right, so now that we've set that up, let's take a look at what else we can do with it. Since I do a lot of MoGraph type work, this is a setup that is actually really pretty useful. I don't have to keyframe anything. I have it set up where I can just automatically hit play and boom, it's animated. So let me show you how this is set up. So as you can imagine, I have the box in a few different states and that's mostly because I could have done it with two states if I didn't want the extra flaps in here. But since I did, I have a state with the box open a state with two flaps closed and then another state with three flaps closed. So that's what each one of these nulls is. And then I have them stuck inside of a cloner again. The cloner is set to linear and its clones is set to blend. And I only have one clone. And then I created a cube. And instead of animating this, I just added a dynamics tag to it so that it falls with gravity. And then I created a plane effector again. And this one is also set to modify clone and nothing else. In this case, I created a box field. This linear field actually is not doing anything. And then I made the box field a child of the cube. Now I have a couple other things going on here. I have a plane at the very bottom of this cube for my dynamics. And that's just because it calculates fast. So I just have a simple thing in here. And then I also created another box to keep this box from exiting it. So if I hit play again, that's what it does. And the reason the flaps kind of bounce up and down is because the box here has a little bit of bounce inside of the uh, dynamics tag. Okay, so pretty simple setup. It's kind of a useful thing. I do that all the time. Imagine like a bunch of little bits falling into a box or something like that and it box automatically closing and maybe 
going down a conveyor belt or something like that. I don't know. Use your imagination. So I took this setup and I thought, what else can I do with it? So I went and I created this. This is based off the original thing that I showed you at the very beginning with a few little differences. So to start off with, I took the cloner and I changed it from linear to honeycomb array. And then I'm triggering the little animations with another cloner. And how I'm using this cloner is I have a dynamics tag on it and I have that set to add velocity peak and I have it applied a tag to children and individual elements all. And for speed, I have this set to ellipsoid just so it doesn't calculate the spheres. And then I'm triggering the gravity on the spheres or rather the cloner with a field. So I have a plane effector here and this plane effector has a spherical field on it. And I'm animating the spherical field from like zero or actually from 65 to I believe 2000, yeah. So as this scales out, the middle points or wherever it comes in contact just adds just a very little bit of variation of movement, which makes them drop. And if I hit play on that, you'll see what happens. So what you're seeing there is the spheres colliding with the other spheres and triggering that animation. So that's it for this setup. I went on and I made this even more complicated. So this one is set up exactly the same way as F4. I made three cloners just at varying vertical distances. Um, and this is being triggered not with the spheres bouncing off the surfaces, but with a shader. So I went into the plane effector and I created a random field and a shader field. And inside the shader field is just this texture map. So let me show you what that's built out of. So it's built out of a few noises. I'll scale this down just a little bit so you can see it. 40, maybe not that small. So you can see it's just an animated noise and I have it scaled way up. Oops, 2000, I believe. Yeah, so you can see it's just big gloopiness. And then I have another noise on top of that just to break up the gloopiness. And then to add a little extra something, I threw Joe's face in there. <laughs> One, because I had it, and because why not? <laughs> anyway, when you hit play on that one, it won't play in the screen because it's way too many things going on. All right, that's it for this week. I hope you experiment with this technique because it can be pretty powerful. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, leave in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, go to patreon.com forward slash workbench and check out the blog at workbench.tv. As always, I'm Sev, and we will catch you next week. <laughs>